Yo, 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 what up, what up, what up? This is Toby with O-Line Security, and we're back with another Cert Master Lab for Security Plus 701. We're actually on one of my favorite tools that I love using. It's Wireshark, Wireshark, Wireshark. Wireshark is what we use to capture packets going across our network. Most of the stuff that you're doing on a network, right, on your system, whether it's pinging, whether it's going to a website, whether you're transferring files, it can be captured using tools like Wireshark. All right, so let's not even talk too much about it. Let's just dive right into it. I'm going to log in. You know the username, you know the password. Hey, y'all, if you've been enjoying this series, please do me a favor and smash the like button. Tell a friend to tell a friend to come over here and learn with us at O-Line Security. This is the community where we learn the fundamentals from the ground up. All right, now we're going to start up Wireshark. I'm just going to go in here and just look for Wireshark. Just type W. It is right there. Hey, keep in mind, if we're moving at a fast pace, that is intentional. We are intentionally moving at a swift space, swift pace, so that we can record as much information within a limited amount of time so you don't just get bored staring at the screen all right we're going to capture traffic on this on this interface right here eth zero right the interfaces are what we use to establish a connection or to just connect to other networks now what are we going to do all right first things first we're going to go to d to structurereality.com reality.com boom once that is done we're going to go back to wireshark and we're going to stop that capture right because it's going to capture everything we don't want it to be as noisy all right we stopped the capture what do they want us to do next they want us to use wireshark to examine the capture frames all right let's just take a look at what we're looking at real quick i'm going to go all the way to the top if you're not familiar with wireshark if this is your first time looking at it right now on the left hand side we have the, the packet number after the packet number we have the time the packet was captured we have the source the packet came from, the destination that the packet is going to, we have the protocol being used, the length of the packet, and some information about what's going on. Now, first thing, what is the IP address of structurereality.com? All right, so we have to, um, let's just filter out for HTTP traffic. Just type HTTP in this display filter. This display filter is only gonna, it's gonna filter out what it's going to filter for what we're looking for. Right now, we just want to look for HTTP traffic, right? Because we had established that session with structurereality.com over here. This is over HTTP. It's not being encrypted. All right, so the IP address is right there. 172.16.0.201. Boom. All right, next. Uh, they want us to clear the display filter already. All right, cool. Oh, use Wireshark to determine if any DNS traffic was captured. So we're going to go back. Switch this from HTTP to DNS. That's simple, right? And a bunch of DNS traffic was captured. It had to be captured, right? And when you're when we're going to different websites, different web servers, different applications, that we have to ask the DNS server for their IP address. All right, cool. Let's go into the next session. We're not done with Wireshark. We are not done with Wireshark. All right, what we're gonna do is clear this, and we're gonna start up a new capture. Continue without saving. To start up a new capture, you just go back over here and select this start button. We're going to continue without saving. We're going to go to a different website. We're going to go to DVWA now. All right. Now we're going to go back to Wireshark and stop the capture. All right. Now we're going to play around with this display filter a little bit more. It says use Wireshark display filter to, to display only captured frames that include this IP address. So we're going to do that. I believe it's IP.ADDR. Oh, and they give examples too. IP.address equals equals. 10.1.16.66. This is only going to show us traffic going that involves 10.1.16.66. It doesn't matter if it's the source or the destination. That is the only traffic that we want to be displayed out of everything. All right. Next, create a new display filter that shows captured frames that have a TTL value of 128. I believe that's IP.TTL. And it has to be below 128, so less than 128. All right, so this is going to show us the TTL value that is below 128, right? If you're not familiar with TTL, this is simply the amount of time or the amount of hops that it takes a packet to to exist within a network, right? Before it's it's thrown away by the router. Right, this is pretty much the, the life of a packet, right? The TTL life of a packet. All right, now the capture frames or TTL are below 
128. Also the display filter to include ARP frames, pretty easy. ARP is a protocol, so we just put the protocol here. For the most part with protocols, we can just give the protocol name and it will, it will dis, uh, filter the display to only that protocol, right? ARP is a layer two protocol that we use to update our ARP table. Or if you're not familiar with that, I highly recommend to get into our Security Fundamentals Academy. We go into ARP into extreme details, especially when it comes to ARP poisoning attacks. All right. Uh, oh, to include, well, we have to include ARP. So let's go back to IP. We're going to do this. And to include ARP, we're going to do OR ARP. So we're going to have the, the TTL and ARP package shown. Right. If you do and you probably won't get anything because you need both and it's looking for this and ARP. So I did or instead of and. All right. Create a new display filter to show frames that do not contain the IPV address. OK, we're going to do IP .addr does not equal. So that's exclamation point does not equal 10.1.16.66. We probably won't get anything yet because all the traffic going out of our interface is using this IP address. Cool, 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 cool. Use the display filter expression syntax windows to create a display filter display only TCP packets with the thin, thin flag set. All right, thin flags are a pretty big deal. TCP.flags.thin equals equals one. This is going to show us where the thin flags are set. If you're not familiar with the flags, once again, Security Fundamentals Academy, right? There are a bunch of different flags that are set within a packet. You have push flags, push flags, thin flags, act flags, synact flags, synth flags, reset flags. They all have their different purposes. Okay, only with that. All right, the display frames. Yep, yep, yep. What is the IPv4 source address of the system that used the first fin flag? That is going to be us. That is 10.1.16.66. Boom. All right, modify the current display filter to remove frames that have the ACK flag set. We don't want to see frames with the ACK flag set. So we want ACK equals equals zero. That is another flag. We don't want to see frames with the ACK flag set. All right. If you wanted to see them with the ACK flag set, you would do equals equals one. All right. Edit the display filter to display frames with thin, but not sin set. So you already get the gist. Right, we want flags, so we want the fin flag set equals equals one and tcp dot flags dot sin equals equals zero. All right, so this is showing us tcp flags, it's showing us packets, right? It's only displaying packets that have the fin flag set and sin flag not set, right? Fin flag set and sin flag not set. Okay, we're going to clear that and we're going to go to the next section, All right? Right now, we're just utilizing Wireshark to show us different things, show us different things. If you wanted to see TCP packets where data was being sent across your network, you would set the, you want this push flag equals equals one, right? This is where we can just limit to data being sent across the network. We're looking at all data that's being sent across the network with this push flag set right now. If you wanted to see connections being established, we could use a sin flag, right? Because the sin flag is showing us when people are trying to establish some type of connection, right? It may not be fully established, but we're at least we're trying, right? When we went to this website over here, we said, hey, are you online? That's where you see this sin flag right here, right? We see the flags right here, you all, right? We see the flags right here. Like if I break something down, let's just look at HTTP. I'm going to go to the top. Um, oh yeah, yeah, no, I'm going to clear the filter. All right. So look, oh, I just saw it. So look, we just see this sin flag, right? Our system right here is saying, Hey, are you online? That's the sin flag right there. Next, that system responds back to us, right? It was the destination over here. Now it's right here at the source is responding back to us saying, Hey, yeah, we are online. That's sin act. And then we finally respond back saying, okay, cool. You're online. That's the act flag. We're acknowledging that you're online. Get ready because we're about to ask you for something. And that's what we did in the next line. We asked it for this web page right here to get a web page. Remember the HTTP verb. We're trying to get a web page. All right, next. We're going to use the same stream right here. The same stream, the same stream, the same stream. 
We're going to use the display filter to locate the first frame of the communication with DVWA. Uh, let's just type DVWA dot structure reality dot com. Uh, actually, let me get some assistance. I think I'm missing something. Okay, TCP contains. TCP contains structure reality dot com. All right, now this is going to filter just for the TCP package that contains structurereality.com. We can go ahead and try to piece this together, right? Instead of looking at the packets individually, we can go ahead and analyze this entire stream together. So how do we want to do that, right? So what we're going to do is come up to analyze right here, or you could right click, but we're going to come up to analyze up here and we're going to select follow. We want to follow that TCP stream, right? And now we're looking at everything between the server and the client. All the packets that are, well, the traffic that's in green, in red, I said green, I don't know why. This traffic that's in red, that's coming from the client, that's coming from us. We're trying to get this web page over here. This is the host that we're trying to get it from. This is our user agent, we're using Firefox, okay? And this is the server that's responding back to us. You see how I'm clicking back and forth, the packets are changing, right? The packets are changing in the background. Right, this is the server responding to us. They gave us, it's a 200 okay. This response code is 200. We have different types of HTTP response code. This one is successful. So whatever we asked for up here, which was this web page, it was successfully given to us. All right, let's go look at a different stream. We're gonna look at HTTP stream. So let's filter this out for just HTTP traffic. All right, cool. Uh, you make sure open up. Open and follow ACB stream. Frame contain the TCP request. Oh, let me make sure I didn't skip anything. Okay, with that, all right, cool. Cool, cool. All right, so now we're gonna follow a HTTP stream going over here. All right, containing this TCP request. All right, so we can do TCP contains Switch this guy out with plain English.co.uk. All right, that's not giving us anything. All right, let's just go to HTTP. Well, we can go to that website actually. Let's go. Well, we're not capturing anything. All right, we're not capturing anything. So, what I'm going to do, because the, the capture isn't started, we're just going to filter out for HTTP traffic, right? Because we can do the same thing that they want us to do over here with HTTP traffic. I'm going to do it this way first and I'm going to see how they did it over here. And we're just going to go to analyze. Same thing. I'm, we're looking at HTTP traffic. We're going to go up to analyze. We're going to go to follow and we're going to follow HTTP stream, right? We can see the same thing. We can see the client. We can see the server, right? But this time it's not encrypted. So we can see what's going on, right? It's HTTP this time. It's not using, T it's not using uh, any type of encryption right here, right? HTTP is using port 80. HTTP is not encrypted. So we can see everything that's going on in this website. All right, it says, the next question says, attempt to locate the HTTP stream segment from the web server. So we want to find welcome to damn vulnerable. All right, that's easy. All we got to do is come down here in this find bar right here and just type some of that in. Welcome to damn. And if you hit enter, well, welcome. Hold on. There we go. All right, we have welcome right here. Welcome damn vulnerable web application. Boom, that's it right there, all right? All right, but this is the one they wanted us to look for specifically. So I just filtered out for H1. Welcome to damn vulnerable web application. I specifically filtered out for H1 to get exactly what they wanted us to look for. All right, but I wanna see what they did over here. Um, yeah, we actually have to capture that first though. All right, we're gonna keep moving along. What color and from which side of the conversation is the HTML code of welcome to damn? This is coming from, it's blue, right? We can, we don't have to guess, it's down here, right? You can see the server is in blue, the client is in red, right? It's, we're not guessing, we're not making anything up. So it's blue and it's coming from the server. All right, cool. We're going over to our questions. Wireshark is a pretty cool tool, y'all. You got to get used to it. 
I mean, you, you may not be even using it on a daily basis. Just get familiar with what's going on here, right? How this is structured. You have your time, you have your source, the destination protocol, length, info. You get more information down here, right? To start understanding and getting in more details about each individual packet that will be down here. And also right here, there are three frames. This frame, this frame, this frame, or three panels, whatever word you want to use. All right, question. What is the proper term for the network communication container Container at the data link layer? That's going to be a frame. Pain of the Wireshark interface can be used to view the contents of a package payload on both hex and ASCII. That's going to be packet data. What display field to comparison operator is used to express the concept of two values not being the same? That does not equal. Which of the following statements is true? Capture filters are used to highlight specific frames already present in the no, that's not true. Display filters limit the packets accepted. Uh, capture filter display filter are used to find packets matching. Yes, here we go. All right, you have packet filters, and you, I mean you have display filters, and you have capture filters. They're two different things. What is the primary factor that determines what header or payload information can be viewed through a network sniffer? That's going to be encryption, whether it's encrypted or not. All right, that is it, y'all. If you enjoyed this series as much as I did, please smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Right, we go into way more details of a lot of these applications, a lot of these tools that are being used throughout this lab in our security fundamentals course, right? Because there are fundamentals to these things. These lab series are just to get you through them and to help you understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. Without these walkthrough videos, you're really just going through the what, right? T is telling you what to do throughout all of these things, but you don't really get a, a, a solid understanding of why. Right, so that's the main point of the walkthrough videos here is to give you that solid understanding of why. But if you want to get the, the fundamentals, the basic building blocks of all of these things, all of these tools, concepts, and technologies, the Security Fundamentals Academy is for you. Go to onlinesecurity.com and register for our Security Fundamentals Academy. Peace. See you next time.